today we'll be talking about how to create an experimentation program that's more than A-B testing. I am Annika and I have Paul here from Spiro, he's my colleague. Um, and there are a couple of reasons why we are doing this talk together. Yeah, so Annika and I have regular one-to-ones and we, we always talk about our programs and our retainers and how they're, how they're working. And a question that's come up quite frequently is when clients are coming up with test ideas um, and how, how to deal with those test ideas. And one of the things that Annika was talking about is ask them what their problems are rather than focusing on the execution. And that's, that's really where the stem of this whole idea has come from, of how we can get more out of A-B testing. So rather than just running a test and seeing whether it's a winner or a loser, how can we get more out of it? And this concept of problems over execution is where we were focusing. If we're looking at trying to identify problems, it's about trying to learn from those rather than just getting to running a test. Yeah, and, and in a way, when we're thinking about the roadmap, then um, so obviously we're doing kind of voice of customer research at the start. So we have a list of a list of insights, basically. And then there was a time because I've been really enjoying those conversations with Paul as well. And, and we were just talking about so we have this list of of kind of insights. But then what is the how do we know what is the, the first test that we should be? we should be testing, but then we got to a point where we realized that it's not really about just testing, it's about those problems, but then actually learning throughout the process, because the, the A-B test is almost like, you know, it's, it's kind of a great way to, to experiment, but it's not always the most efficient way. Yeah, have your learning as a deliverable rather than just the number of tests that you've run or the number of successful tests. Um, because if you look at trying to replicate that in the second quarter, it's very difficult. Whereas if you look at what you've learned in the period in which you're doing it, that can be something you can continue to use time and time again. Yeah, so we've got to a point where we would have the key problems, we would have a process in the middle, and then we would have the kind of outcome or the kind of the learnings at the end of it. And this is where the idea of using A-B testing as a research method. So it's not just about trying to build the test and get it launched and try and reach statistical significance, but using the whole process and learning as we go about it. So that middle bit, there will be A-B testing, but it wouldn't be the only method that we use because, um, because we also need to understand the qualitative. And, and in a way, it kind of um, groups into two. So you could have um, kind of research methods that you want to have in your, in your roadmap, which are kind of overarching research methods. But then you also have a set of tools that you use together with A-B testing or in, instead of A-B testing or kind of in a lead up to A-B testing, which will then save you time and kind of efficiency um, in coming up with, with solutions that are more likely to, um, to help your customers and, and kind of fixing their problems. Yeah, you were talking, Annika, about you know, just using a quantitative research method, which A-B testing is. And if you just use a quantitative research method, you're missing out on a lot of other opportunities. You know, even if you were to analyze the analytics afterwards, that's still quantitative. So we're bringing in qualitative elements as a part of this research method to increase the learning over time. And in a way, so you could be, you could be running A-B tests, but if you have that, that idea, or like Paul was saying, like sometimes, you know, whether the client comes to you with an idea or or you have done like a brainstorming session and you have, have a list of uh, testing ideas. There are a couple of considerations that I, I, I would like to go through before I make the decision whether to run it or not. And one of them being, if I run this test, and uh, would I be confident that whatever the outcome is, I will get some kind of learning. So with a winner, at least you know that most, most probably you should be implementing it. But with an inconclusive or a losing test, the question is like, why did, you, why did you run it in the first place? 
Um, and then number two is not everybody has lots of traffic. So you need to look at the bandwidth and what are the, how long does it take you to validate an assumption with an A-B test? It could be two weeks, it could be a month, it could be a bit longer than that, hopefully not, but let's say it's a month max. A month to validate an idea where you may be even, even completely sure this is the best solution to even kind of put in front of the audience. You then end up having a month and a month and a month on iterations and you're losing a lot of time. And at the same time, you know, whether you have the traffic or you don't, but instead of this test, those kind of three, three months of testing, for example, what are the other tests you should be or could be running that might make more sense or might be more beneficial for the business? So there are quite a few kind of considerations to think like whether you're ready to test or to do that specific A-B test or is there anything else? Like, for example, can you think about any other methods to help you in that process? So, for example, so here we have a couple of examples where you know, you're looking at the specific problem and then you could be using other, other methods to get to a better A-B test in the, in the long run, or even maybe don't even have, a, have an A-B test. Yeah, I think it's about making it a better end product and allowing you to get the analysis quicker, which if you have small amounts of traffic is also a benefit, but it also means that you're not having to find ways of trying to squeeze in tests because then your focus is on just executing tests as opposed to really what we're trying to talk about here which is trying to get the most from a learning perspective so whether it's uh, a navigation that you want to change an a b test may not necessarily be the right approach if you want to change the design of a page if you want to change the content and the, and the text and the headlines or if it's the functionality if you were to just change these with a b tests you'd be missing out on a huge range of potential learning that you can do. And we're going to go over a few examples. We're not going to go over every single one of these, but we've included a couple of examples of things that we've done in addition to A-B testing to get more learning from them. Yeah, and this list also, it isn't conclusive. So there are, there are different like other methods as well and, and, and other use cases, but we just wanted to give you a couple examples here that we have, we have used in our work. So a tree testing is a great example of how to test navigation. If you were to run this as an A-B test, the number of different avenues in which someone can go down would be almost impossible to analyze. So you can see the example here of a tree testing, if you've not seen one of these before, is that you will create your navigation as it would be used um, with labels, and you then set tasks and activities to see how easily people can find that content. And it measures how long they take, how long they spend on each section, and whether it's a successful and an unsuccessful path. And you can see from the table at the bottom that we had a couple of rounds of this, of improving it just within tree testing. And we were able to increase the success rate by up to 168%. So you may still want to test that at the end, right, Annika? You may still run this as an A-B test, yeah. but you're able to get to the results a lot quicker by using an alternative and maybe sort of more focused method. And I think this is a great example where you can see, so, so you have the success rate of, of vari uh, variant one, which is, you know, those numbers are not really high. And then we came up with a, we thought with a better solution, which you can see is better, but it's actually not that much better. So that's almost a month of testing there. And then finally we got to the third, third variant which is actually much better than the initial one and being able to test that will mean that the A-B test we run actually makes much more sense because we have already saved a couple of months of testing time. Yeah, and the success metrics here are it's easier to make a decision and it's quicker to make a decision and, and both of those things are very hard to analyze within purely an, an A-B test. Yeah, and then another one it was like five second test works really well with design, but you can also think about kind of how to use copy or kind of content here as well. But at the end of the day, it's a way to, to understand whether people remember 
what they've seen and and whether they kind of understand and can recall elements of it and what are those elements that they can recall and whether these are the ones that you want them to recall and and this can be also very helpful like um paul has done this with um in it, in his work so he's going to talk that through but um but that's kind of a good example uh how to use a five second test yeah so this was uh further down a page uh, on, on a home page. So again, if we were to run this as a test, uh, it would take a long time to get any analysis. So what we did is we just focused it on these two areas with the, the control and the variant um, with a view of understanding if people could remember the information and make a decision uh, easier from it. So from the control, from that word cloud of what people remembered, you can see it's not as clear. Uh, and there were a few comments that came out, but there wasn't a lot of uh, similarity. In the variant, you can see those messages are a lot stronger. So when people saw the variant content, they were able to recall with a lot more certainty what they saw. And that's the, that's the whole point in that this five second test is about, is the information clear? And this was how the best way to analyze it was with, with, a, with a five second test. And you may choose to run this as an A-B test afterwards, or you may decide just to implement it but it's about trying to get that learning as quick as possible in the right method. Yeah, and I think, you know, it, it can be some other kind of design kind of validations as well. Like, for example, when you're trying to come up with a different approach to the design, like, for example, shall we use photos or shall we use illustrations? And instead of designing everything out, you can then kind of validate quite quickly how the audience perceives one or the other and then you can, whether you create the test afterwards as well with, with your new designs, but you at least have that learning already that you are potentially going in a better direction than you, than you would be otherwise. Yeah, I, th I think that example of, of variations is a really good one for both the design and, and for the next one we're going to talk about, which is content. It's very easy to decide, oh, I want to test three or four different messages. And if you're doing that as a multivariant test, then obviously you need longer time, you need more traffic, it can take longer to get results. In the example here, for some copy testing, we're able to focus purely on the headline and understand whether or not it makes sense, but also is relevant. And that's what the table in the bottom right is, is showing is both a clarity score and a relevancy score. So oh, yeah, it's, it's really good because people are, so basically we used, a panel of people who are specific to that business or kind of relevant to that business, right? So they're in the same sector, in the same vertical, the, the, the job level is, is relevant to the, to the people who would be making the, the, the decision whether to, to buy the tool or not. So for, for the company, it's really interesting to see where there might be issues with the copy. So, for example, they were quite surprised that actually clarity was okay, but it wasn't relevant. There were issues, you know, it wasn't huge issues, but mediocre is not a good score. So there's obviously opportunity to increase relevancy to, to those people. So you know exactly where to focus, how to kind of work on the copy. And then, you know, whether you, you A-B test then, or you could have, like we did in this case, have another round of copy testing and see after changing your copy based on the, the feedback, the, the qualitative feedback we got around relevancy, whether we are now hitting the relevancy score higher and, and did we still keep it clear enough? Did, did we not kind of mess, mess out the clarity part of it? So you can kind of double check that straight away and then be like, okay, so we're good on clarity, we're good on relevancy, let's launch the A-B test. And again, this has taken a couple of weeks rather than kind of uh, tweaking the copy and, and doing kind of longer term testing. And it's a much better learning at the end of the quarter when you're you know, looking back at the tests that you run in that you're able to say, well, we're making more relevant headlines now rather than you know, we tested four or five different headlines, three of them were you know, losers and one was a winner. Here it enables you to go back to where you were starting from and really understand what it is you're trying to change and, and what makes the difference. And I think that's the, yeah. 
the flip side between doing multiple variations of just having, oh, well, we, we've done it four times, there were three losers. But if you don't learn from those three losers, then it's a really uh, big waste. Yeah, really, it's kind of at the end of the quarter saying, you know, what are the results? Instead of saying, okay, 10 tests, two winners, uh, eight losers, you would be like, okay, actually, we know that our audience is X, Y, and Z. These are the messages that kind of count for them and uh, or kind of make sense for them. And this is what they, they might be thinking or it's just kind of getting overall customer insights and kind of learnings how people think or what is it that they need kind of along the along the way of of that experimentation uh, roadmap yeah and these are all things that we would recommend doing before a b testing but there's a th few things that you can run concurrently at the same time just to further enhance what you're going to learn from that so you can run heat maps on the variations review session recordings and i think this is the idea that we're talking about isn't it annika is like I don't want to just run an A-B test to run an A-B test and have one metric out of it. I want to get multiple pieces of information and insight so that then when I do get the outcome, whether that's a win, lose or inconclusive, I'm still learning from it. And you also kind of understand a bit more, especially doing some of these um, examples that are here, like heat map session recordings, polls. Um, just making sure that, you know, you have been tracking the things you need to track and at least at the end of the test, um, you might have a better understanding what is the next step. Like, also, like, do you need maybe further research, or, or which is the next next test that you might be wanting to take, or maybe there's something else. So, so that kind of that qualitative part um, and gathering that learning is really important, even to kind of understand where you would be going next and what makes sense and what are still the gaps that you don't understand about your customers. Yeah, and it, and it all sort of comes back to where we're talking about not just focusing on the execution and then here's an idea, I want to test it, let's see if it was a winner or a loser, but keep coming back to these problems so that then you're always returning to an area in which you know you can improve. And if you pepper your learning along with the A-B testing, then you're going to get more out of it. And ultimately, it's going to be a, a better roadmap in that you're constantly working in the right areas and you're taking the information that you've learned and continually applying it, whether it's with a design clarity test, whether it's with content uh, relevancy, that can be applied in the next test and the next test and next piece of content. Whereas if you were just running A-B tests, you wouldn't get that information. And still A-B tests are really important, right? Like it's, it's a very important tool to have in the toolbox. But we're kind of, what we're trying to say is that it shouldn't be the only one or it could be, there could be other, other ways to kind of enhance your, your program. So yeah, basically going back to, in order to, in order to understand what it is, like whether you need that A-B test or some other method, or kind of research, you need to be going back to the customer problems and, and you need to start from the problems, um, being sure that it's aligned with the business goal for the quarter or for the year. And from that, you create that roadmap um, of kind of um, finding and kind of gathering learnings and kind of understanding the direction that you wanna go in order to make the life of your customer better and fixing their issues. Sure. Um, so you can kind of create tests that are more informed and also kind of understand what is that further research that you might need um, in, in the long term. And Paul has a, has, a good, has a good kind of thought here as well to kind of finish up our talk. Yeah, it's kind of the idea of if you're trying to head towards increasing conversion in a metric, you know, you don't know if you're pointing in the right direction, but if you're if you're focused on trying to fix customer problems, what you leave behind are improvements that ultimately result in increases in your key metrics. So that, that's the idea, point towards problems, not solutions. Thank you for listening. Bye.